Nick, I wonder if you're a, a fan of the deal, where do you think the real magic is within the deal in this case? Well, this is really uh, James Gorman's vision uh, when he became CEO of Morgan Stanley to emphasize the brokerage and wealth management business. It reminds me a little bit of, uh, of the Dean Witter deal by Morgan Stanley many decades ago. This is the 220 uh, version of that in that uh, Dean Witter was a Main Street uh, brokerage house, uh, basically. And uh, I think he believes that, uh, uh, that emerging wealth is a, is a, is a uh, emerging wealth customer base uh, Many of those, or some of those, will become uh, full-fee brokerage uh, uh, customers as they increase their wealth over time. I, I really think E-Trade uh, had to make some sort of a deal, uh, given the no-fee uh, uh, trading uh, uh, situation in the discount brokerage business. And I think they got a really good deal. Uh, this is a full-price deal. Uh, it makes a lot of sense for them. And uh, we'll see how it works for Morgan Stanley. Dick, given uh, that, that it is a good deal, you would argue, from E-Trade's perspective, and I think some uh, of Morgan Stanley's competitors are, are making the same argument, uh, what's the worst case scenario here so that investors understand it? I mean, largely they seem to like it because uh, Morgan Stanley's hardly down at all. But, but how does this go wrong if somehow it does? Well, it, you know, it, it could, uh, the dilution may not get to zero or positive over a period of time, but it will probably get close to that. So I don't think it's going to be a disaster by any stretch of the imagination. Whether it really becomes uh, uh, even a single is probably a question mark. I don't see how it becomes a home run, uh, given the price, uh, but it could. I mean, you know, who knows how this is all going to, uh, uh, the, 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 disruption that is occurring in financial services from all kinds of areas, uh, it's very hard to predict how it's all going to uh, settle down. Uh, I think it's a risk, but I can understand. I thought, quite frankly, that uh, his decision to go as far as he was going with wealth management and brokerage and, and eliminate you know, a lot of the investment banking, I thought that was a bigger risk than this risk that he's taking now. And, and, and he was successful in doing that. Yeah. You know, Dick, in, in politics, and I say this coming off of that Democratic debate last night where there was a lot of focus on the middle class or the Trump administration's blue collar boom, there is so much more focus on the middle class. Um, you can make the argument that that's actually happening in banking right now, too, whether it's the deal today, whether it's Goldman Sachs with its markets push, or even the fact that UBS also today announced a new CEO, an outside CEO that has a retail banking uh, background. What do you make of that? What is it about this, I guess, as you put it, emerging wealth customer uh, that has become so attractive so recently? Well, I'm surprised that they didn't do it before. Uh, I've always believed in it. I mean, the, the essence is, is that at 70 percent of the financial services revenue is in the consumer uh, side, and, and, and a huge percentage of that is from middle market upwards. So if you want to be a diversified financial institution, which I think you should be, you have to be in the uh, middle market of the middle uh, uh, income consumer. Uh, it took a long time for some of these uh, financial institutions to understand that, but I believed it for since I've been in the business. Uh, so how are you thinking about M&A in the space overall right now? We mentioned earlier this morning uh, BB&T SunTrust, uh, uh, Franklin, like Mason earlier this week. Now this, I mean, where should we look for M&A to actually happen with the fastest pace? Well, it's, there's going to be more consolidation. The, the large institutions really aren't able to do uh, M&A, uh, at least in, their, uh, in the areas of which they are already operating. So it's going to be the smaller uh, companies uh, that uh, continue to uh, uh, combine. Uh, it's, technology is, the cost of technology and the value of technology is that you can uh, reduce costs by having a greater volume. And so that's driving it. And, and margins, and the competition is, is, is hard. Margins are decreasing. So you, you have to consolidate. 
So just to take a step back, or I guess look at this deal specifically, Dick, I mean, it's the biggest takeover by a big U.S. bank since the 2008 crisis. Any reason to think that this is going to have any kind of issue going through regulators and lawmakers in D.C.? I don't think so. Uh, I think that uh, if, if this was a, a, a mainstream bank, uh, let's put it that way, as opposed to, to an investment bank, uh, I don't think this deal could get done. Uh, I, I think there's still a lot of uh, uh, concern amongst the regulators to, to see, you know, J.P. Morgan or Bank America or Wells Fargo or something get bigger. But, uh, you know, Morgan Stanley is not that large compared to those. This is in a business that they are already in. And uh, I think uh, they could do a deal like this. C certain Goldman could do a deal like this. But I'm not sure that a, that a large financial institution would be able, the regulators would allow it. One last thing, Dick, while I got you here. Uh, yesterday in a filing, uh, Bank of America cited the possibility of negative interest rates in the United States as a business risk uh, for the first time. Is that something that's being talked about uh, more openly, you think, than, say, last year? I think the only talk about it is it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> uh, I, I don't believe in negative rates. I don't think there's any evidence. How long have we had negative interest rates in Japan? How has their economy done in the last 15 or 20 years? I don't think it helps. I think it hurts. You have to have a strong financial institution. And, of course, it reduces the income of financial institutions. So uh, I don't think there's any possibility in the near term that we have negative interest rates in the United States. All right. Well, your point on Japan is a good one on the heels of that uh, last GDP print. Uh, Dick, thank you as always.